All right, welcome back to Fuck a Socks, the podcast, episode 170. Today on the show, is a new deadly virus on its way just in time for the 2024 election? We're going to tell you about it. Then, in Cringe of the Week, we have a new trans punk band that is singing about black crime. Very intersectional. Then in Urban Decay, we have a Crimes in Broad Daylight section, followed by a The People Are Fighting Back Because We've Had Enough section. And last but not least, this college graduation got ruined because the MC, I assume, has never read a person's name before. All this and more, it's Fluckus Talks, the podcast, episode 170, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than words, louder than but at the same time, words speak louder than actions because, because louder. sometimes it's the right sometimes thing to do. The right thing to do. Very cool. Very, Very cool. cool. Very cool. Fuck the podcast featuring Richard the Rap All right, one for one on the intro as always. Guys, this week's episode is brought to you by our very based show watcher friends over at Farmer Bill's Provision. Now, as you know, as viewers of the show, the bad guys are constantly trying to poison our food. They add seed oils and preservatives that make us fat, toxify our cells, and lower our testosterone. That's the goal. So now that we know this, it's on us to replace our pantry and our snack cabinets with really high quality snacks that are not gonna let them do that. And that's where Farmer Bill's Provisions comes in. Farmer Bill's is aware of the attempted poisoning and that's why they have produced what I call the Wagyu of beef jerky. This stuff is better than any jerky you've ever had or any of that crap they sell in the gas station. This is way different. The pieces are softer and fattier. The flavors are fantastic and it tastes so, so good. And it's great for you. All of Farmer Bill's products are soy free, preservative free, seed oil free, grass fed and finished with zero fillers. And like we said, Farmer Bill himself is a show watcher. So if he supports us, it's on us to support him right back. Farmer Bills also just launched Thick Billies, which is the healthier, better version of Slim Jims, pretty much. So do what's best for yourself and your family. Replace your pantry with healthier alternatives from Farmer Bills Provisions. Use code FLECUS20 at checkout for 20% off your entire order. And if you send me a screenshot showing me that you placed an order and another screenshot showing me that you follow Farmer Bill on Instagram, I will follow you back on the social media of your choice. The link is in the description for Farmer Bill's provisions. Make sure you use Fleckus20 at checkout for that 20% off. The people over at Farmer Bill's are show watchers and they are the absolute best when it comes to cutting out the toxins from our snacks and replacing them with something good. Link is in the description. Now let's get into housekeeping. Farmer Bill's provisions, the perfect protein snack. All right. Thank you to Farmer Bill's for sponsoring. Farmer Bill. We love Farmer Bill, guys. He's so on the same page. He's a show watcher. And as you know, there's not much you can eat that doesn't kill you. Yeah. Farmer Bill's is something you can eat and enjoy, and it tastes good, and the flavors are great. Yeah. Farmer Bill is a one of us. One of us, literal. It's Richard. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. It's not. It's a different guy, and he's great. All right. We have a huge show today. Very strong script. Very strong housekeeping. Like a double urban. Some uplifting stuff. Cringe is good. It's one of our favorite shows we've ever put together. Urban is my favorite section. Yeah. So let's get right into it. Over the last few days, we've uh, had Aurora Borealis. Yeah, close enough. (laughs) Close enough. Is that what it is? Yeah. The Northern Lights, as it's called for people who can't pronounce Aurora Borealis. Not me, can't relate. Mm-hmm. Uh, so here we have it in Maine and all over. There's videos. The sky looks so nice. Um, here's a shot from Roku City. It, it looks like it says uh, Roku yeah. City. Very yeah. cool. Uh, here's a horse from yeah. our friends over at the Blues Brothers Ranch. Very cool. <laughs> Blues Brothers Ranch. Is that what it is? No. Rebel Ranch. Rebel, Rebel Ranch. Ranch. Yeah. Rebel Ranch. But yeah, either way, very nice looking skies. Never seen anything like it. It's very cool stuff. Came far south. South is Florida, South Carolina, everything like that. So pretty unprecedented shit. Very unprecedented. Very beautiful. Maybe a sign of the end times. Okay. I was wondering when the spiral was coming because I thought. It could be a negative. Yeah, it can definitely be negative, but we're not going to go there. A couple days ago, Trump had a big rally in Wildwood, New Jersey. Yeah. said 80,000 people showed up. Yeah. (laughs) Which is the size of a city. That's huge. Look at that. Tons of people. 
Love to see it. Uh, you know, good. But let's also do some rallies in some swing states. Yeah. Please. <laughs> New Jersey. Please. New Jersey, New York, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we just let those ones go. But I mean, I, I, as a leading indicator, that's amazing. If it's a blue state like New Jersey, you know, the support is everywhere. And so, I mean, it's a good sign. Joe Biden couldn't obviously couldn't get anybody like media. They skip it these days. You mm -hmm. know how it's like one to one ratio of media to like actual supporters. Mm -hmm. Media goes, eh, you know, I'll get it. I'll, I'll see the blunder on Twitter. Yeah, they basically only need one representative there. Truly, no one shows up. There was a debate joke tweet about like the upcoming debates that would potentially be between Joe Biden, Trump and RFK. This guy said, I'm actually excited to see a debate between a brain worm, a reanimated corpse and warp speed Snooky. It's pretty funny. Yeah, decent. You know. uh, is he saying warp speed like Operation Warp Speed or uh, just Snooky on steroids? I don't know. I Up think Snooki on steroids. Okay. Most comedians don't know the, they don't get in the weeds about what's going on. They don't know the actual names of the operations. Yeah. Even yeah. though it was our least favorite operation that ever basically existed. <laughs> yeah, we do know that. Um, so obviously a huge turnout for Trump. Things are looking good coming into 2024 election, which is just a few months away, even though it doesn't feel like it. Yeah, a new poll just came out, too, with Trump ahead in a bunch of swing states like, by a lot. So Democrat panic button. I think, you know, we've probably said that before, but the polls do reflect the what you see on the streets. Right. Exactly. Which is why if the Democrats want to win, besides having illegals vote for Joe Biden, uh, they're going to need some sort of black swan event. Yeah. The last one was like George Floyd combined with COVID. That was two black swans together. You never see, you very rarely see two black swans and they just said, yep, it's an election here. What do you expect? <laughs> they nuked it twice. Two of them. Yeah. <laughs> Press two buttons. Uh, so, yeah, that was one. And if there is going to be some sort of virus that comes back, it could be this one. FDA says it's preparing for a bird flu pandemic in people that could kill one in four Americans. Yeah. One in four. That's 25 percent. That's a lot. And if you guys remember like 50 episodes ago, I actually had this exact prediction mm -hmm. where they're going to bring a virus that's more dangerous and blame MAGA. Here's the callback clip. Uh, Disease X, WEF kind of alluding at a new thing. Yeah. Breaking the World Economic Forum will be discussing Disease X on January 17th as part of their annual meeting in Davos uh, with fresh warnings from the World Health Organization that an unknown Disease X could result in 20 times more fatalities than the coronavirus pandemic. I do think there is a timeline where there is a real virus released and it is actually more dangerous and deadly. And then everyone goes, we're not doing this again. I'm ignoring all these whatever. And then everyone actually dies and then they blame all the MAGA people. Unfortunately, there's no way to know. <laughs> so you're just either going to die or not. So yeah. good luck. It's something to think about. Yeah. You know, something to think about. Uh, you know, I always say this. Imagine our opponents are three moves ahead of us Ooh. because they are. Yeah. So they know what they're going to do. They know what we're going to do in reaction to that. And then they know what they're going to do in reaction to that. Yeah, it's easy. It's like a dog who takes the toy away when he wants the other toy. Mm. So the other dog gets jealous and then it frees up the toy that the original dog actually wanted. It's, exactly. It's just one step, step. It's not even that hard. And we're the we're the dogs with the one track mind, the stupid yeah. dog. Yeah. With the belly up. Unfortunately. And I wish our Republican leaders could possibly think two steps ahead. That would be great for us. But but a lot of them are in on it. But Lindsey Graham's busy on TV threatening to nuke Gaza or something. Yeah, we'll get to that. All right, let's get to our next story. The IRS is targeting certain individuals. Yeah, uh, it says breaking the IRS will now target individuals who threaten the U.S. government's ability to govern a vague new criterion for criminal investigations. This includes protesters of foreign relations under the guise of national security, according to its updated operating manual. Hmm. So it's not us. No, I don't think it's so. It's not us. This is any like us. We're, no, we're, we're mostly kidding. Come on. This whole show is satire. Yeah, it's a satire show. My co-host is I, named Richard Ratboy. I overpay on my taxes. Yeah. IRS. I give you a little extra. You spend it on yourselves. This isn't a real thing. We're in a closet room. Yeah, please. This is nothing. <laughs> Don't target us. No need to waste any time or resources on us. Yeah. Um, and did you see the thing about the IRS who most au new audits, like the biggest increase in audits was people earning about 200K? So pure middle class. Yeah. Great. So thanks, Joe. 
Thanks, Joe. You promised us this wouldn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could have sworn they were like, if you make under 400K, nothing's going to change. Yeah, Joe, you promised, forgot, promised again, forgot again. So, <laughs> and then we'll be promised something new mm. with zero remembering <laughs> and then, anything else you promised. And then he's going to get on a microphone and get that Alzheimer's mad that we talked about and go, I never said that. <laughs> so that's our that, that's fun living here, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, let's move on. New York City made a new portal with Ireland. Yeah, big so there's news. Like a, there's a portal on either side in like Dublin and in New York, and you can see into it as if you're there. Uh, and it immediately got trolled with 9-11 stuff. Yeah. Here it goes in the background. R.I.P. Pop Smoke. R.I.P. Right, Pop Smoke. New York rapper. And then he comes back. And then 9-11. 9-11. Classic. That's good shit, though. I kind of like that, you know? Yeah. And I think it's actually kind of nice because everyone in Ireland will be able to peer in and see how bad third world migrants are in New York. Ooh. And then everyone in New York can peer into the portal and see how bad third world migrants are in Ireland. Maybe the third world migrants will just talk to each other <laughs> and then occupy each other. I don't know. Yeah, we're not so different after all. Exactly. Us in Ireland. We're both being flooded. Exactly. Well, speaking of 9-11 and third worlders invading the West, Israel is up to something. Yeah. Or at least it seems like it. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu gave a speech where he basically said that America and the Allies did nothing to help uh, the Jews in the Holocaust. 80 years ago, in the Holocaust, the Jewish people were totally defenseless against those who sought our destruction. No nation came to our aid. Today, we again confront enemies bent on our destruction. Hmm. Nobody came to their aid. Tell that to Easy Company. Yeah. Well, tell that to Dick, uh, Major Dick Winters <laughs> yeah. and the boys of Easy Company because uh, they stormed it. And you know what? If you're getting this wrong about the Holocaust, what else did you get wrong about the Holocaust? Maybe the stats. Maybe some numbers are <laughs> off if you didn't get that right. You're sick. Uh, hey, you know, Auschwitz famously liberated by Jewish forces who just they marched broke themselves in from, out. Yeah, they marched in from somewhere. I don't know. So very disrespectful. Very disrespectful. And what is that? A chip on your shoulder type shit? You just kind of like make sh stuff up? I don't know. And they're doing this attitude. That, no, that's like the I used to walk uphill both ways in the snow. You yeah. know, that's the old grandpa Real shit. boomer shit. That's what I'm saying. And they're doing this thing now where it's all us against the world. Nobody came to help us. And it's almost like they're justifying what they're about to do because mm. their back's against the wall again. I agree. Which scares me. Because then I saw this at Israel, the country of Israel. <laughs> the verified Twitter account said, we will dance again. We will dance again. Dancing so Israelis. They're going to nuke somebody. I don't know. Something bad's there. You're right that they're they're teeing up for something bad. Yeah. Something bad's going to happen. They're really setting it up. And if you don't know what dancing Israelis is referring to, join bonus land. We'll tell you in an hour and 15 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> All right. Let's get something a little uplifting going in housekeeping because we've kind of gone on like the nuclear war, new pandemic track. That's hey, kind of depressing. The Aurora Borealis was beautiful. Yeah, that's true. All right, go ahead. But that could be because of aliens and chemicals and they're going to microwave us or something. All right, all right. All right, so. <laughs> Don't go too far over your skis. We've been playing a lot of golf lately. Yeah. Not golfing. We've been playing golf. That's the correct way to say it. Let's act like we've been there before. Yep. Uh, and I almost got the yips while putting. Mm -hmm. I almost got the yips. There's a couple short putts I missed, and then a couple of times I was like lining up, and then I kind of just like had to take a step back because I didn't even know where I was looking or aiming, and I was like, "What was I about to? What was I about, was I about to do?" Yes, when I hit that putt, um, it was kind of like what happens in the zombie movies mm. when like the person's all pale and sweaty, and it's like, "I'm not feeling, <laughs> I'm not feeling too good." Uh, which way does this putt break? <laughs> yeah. He starts getting sweaty. Ah, he looks a little yellow. <laughs> yeah, so which way I can't even this? see the line. <laughs> That's literally what happens. Like, are you sure you're okay, man? Yeah. So you know how the algorithm's always listening? Yeah. Um, and then it's like, if you say, oh, I've got to get some cat food, you'll get ads for cat food. Yeah. I bet one of the best converting to sales algorithm thing there is, uh -huh. is people with the yips in golf. Yeah. Like Once the computer hears like, man, I can't make a putt. I can't even make an eight footer. What am I doing? <laughs> So I almost got the yips and I started getting these ads. I got an ad here of a putter that you face the hole and you putt like this, which is just idiotic. Side saddle putting. It's the stupidest shit I've ever seen. 
So you got the yips? Maybe you need this. And he barely made that in. That wasn't even center cup. And <laughs> and then this other one, Reaper Golf, which I guess we're getting a free plug. Yeah. But, uh, like well, we think your putter's stupid. Yeah, a I, backwards putter like this. Like, do you suck at golf and have the yips? Maybe you need a stupid backwards putter. Yeah, go ahead. I, I, it can't be worse than already your fucking yips right now. Because yeah. You are trash. So yeah. the, they, they kind of prey on middle-aged men. Norwood three balding pattern. Mm. They go, mm, I can't really get the cl- I can't get the ball to go in. And they go, come here, four hundred and fifty dollars. We well, got you. Come on, we'll take care you of you. Might need to throw those irons away too. Yeah, <laughs> you got the, your short game sucks too. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I was just thinking about that. Like the ad conversions for people with the yips in golf is probably the best conversions out there. Yeah. It's mostly middle age, disposable income people. Yeah. So it's like it's actually great. You already have enough money to golf. And you suck. Yeah. Maybe it's the clubs. We're probably in the wrong business. We could invent a stupid putter and and prey on people. You just need one. That's a great point. And I actually do have a clip from golf. Uh, Rap Boy hit a shot, and then the bird started going crazy. I don't know if he was near their nest. There was, like, another bird they were trying to kill. Uh, But check this out. That's your work right there. This is spooky shit, man. I don't think you should hit it. I'm in the woods. The birds are there. Freaking out. Fleckus is filming, trying to hit his lines. They were circling and going crazy because he hit into the woods. I don't know, man. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Shut the fuck Hold up. Hold on. Let's, we're already here. Let's see my out. Yeah, it sucked. Decent out. We went two feet. All right, well. <laughs> no, that's a good out. I was in the fucking deep shit. Um, Fleckus is like filming. Fleckus is, uh, I need a sidebar here. Real fucking yapper on the golf course. I'm up at my ball. I'm like, okay, what is this? 160. Okay, I'm pr- probably a, uh, a seven iron. Where's the pin? Where uh, the things? He's like, oh, did you see my drive? Oh, my drive. I was doing this. It rolled up. That probably went 320. Shut up. Shut up. And then he films me on the golf course. He's doing a bird bit. I'm like trying to get out of the woods. Yeah. So so as Richard said, I had some massive drives yesterday. (laughs) And there's a couple I carried like 315 carry. Like my ball mark is next to the ball and I'm a yard short of the hole and the hole's 315. You know what? So do the math on that. And I'm not... He had some great drives, and I'm not going to tell him what happened on the tee box at 12. And I I'm have not even going to mention it. I have this thing where I, the people are on the green, and it's a par four, and I don't even tee off until they're off the green because I want to hit the shot I want to hit, and if I do, I'm driving the green. Very smart. It's a problem that not everyone has. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, let's move on. Uh, use this opportunity to help us juice the algo. Tickle the posts, like the video, leave a comment, leave a comment again, and then start yapping. Notifications need to be on, and our P.O. box needs to be full. Please send us stuff. Chill. We haven't gone in a while. We'll go this week. All right. Migrant section. We, yeah. have, an upgra- we have an update from our migrant section. Mayor Eric Adams. Do you want to does he say what he does, or do we have to preface it? Uh, he's going to Rome, basically. Mm. And here's his justification for why the mayor of New York has to go to Rome. The mayor of a metropolitan city, you know, police force, streets, sanitation, stuff like that. Why he's got to go to Italy. He's got to go to Rome. First of all, most important thing, let's go Knicks. Let's win it. Uh, headed to Italy. Part of an overall finding our common grounds, how we deal with migrants and asylum seekers, how we deal with affordable housing, our economy, sustainability, just some important issues. And the most uh, significant moment for me is the opportunity to meet uh, our Holy Father, the Pope, His Holiness, and this is the start of a journey. Yeah, so he needs advice on how to house and support all these illegals from third world countries. And it's like a tough thing to figure it out Yeah, because you don't. Yeah. It's not possible. That's why it's so confusing and you need to get advice. No one's going to tell you the right advice. The right advice is don't bring them in in the first place. Yeah, offer them no services or money. Keep them out of your city and then everything will be clean and orderly and normal. Yeah, and then like I don't want to go into history too much, but uh-huh. – 
didn't Rome, wasn't part of Rome's downfall, the unfettered immigration? Yeah, the barbarian hordes. <laughs> I believe the barbarian so, hordes had something to do with it. Maybe we don't need to ask Rome any advice. Yeah. Like, I can't figure out how to make this work. It's because it's, it's, not, it's meant to not work. Yeah. It's meant to collapse the system and then have you rely more on the federal government. And this is a thing that a lot of a lot of mayors do. They go somewhere exotic or something. It's like um, they disguise it as a fact finding mission or something to learn from. And it's like, dude, just say you want to go to Rome, man. A yeah. free taxpayer funded trip to Rome. That sounds great. Just say it. We'd all appreciate it a little bit more. It's like next week, Eric Adams is like, we're headed to Monaco for the Formula <laughs> One race. Like, and you know what? We have to do it on a yacht. A yeah. super yacht. It's like, I'm looking forward to the opportunity to speak with individuals at the Four Seasons Hotel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We need to know what five-star service really looks like to implement that type of shit in New York. So, I mean, it's yeah. just a vacation, man. You're, you're, you're the mayor of a city, right? Exactly. Well, maybe we should consult some Harvard students about mm. the migrant crisis. They seem to be smart people. Let's see what they have to say about it. Whoever the f*** wants to come here should be able to come here. How, why did we get to come here? Why did my ancestors get to come here? Like, this isn't our country. This, th this is Turtle Island, and it belongs to indigenous people. A lot of the people that are coming out of the country, we don't know who they are, and they change their names once they cross the border. Do you guys have any issues with that? I mean, we don't, we don't know who's in this country. <laughs> yeah. Do like you know what? how many shooters and serial killers and sure. people in this country that are incredibly yeah, violent? Yeah, how many politicians like, are f***ing racist? Yeah, like, who literally... Mm, yeah. Smart. So that's wh Harvard. Yeah, Harvard. Whoever wants to come here can come here. And then the interesting thing about this is we're already doing your plan. That actually is Americans immigration policy right there. Yeah, they, they have like this as if it's some new idea and like, oh, anyone who wants to come can come. We don't care what your name is. We have our own problems. We're already doing that. That's been happening for 24 months. <laughs> and how's that going? Yeah, horribly. Yeah, exactly. Here we have a new graph of uh, or a tweet about Chinese nationals. Yeah, 450 Chinese nationals illegally crossed the United States border in 2021. 24,376 crossed in 2024, which we're in May right Gee. now. So this is a, a, like that's the dream, the, the free like. What is that? 500 times? That's I don't even know. Yeah, I can't even do that math. Can't even that. do that math quickly. So. Something going on. Yeah, there's definitely something going on. Uh, so we're doing her plan. And Hopefully then these are benevolent Chinese nationals. I, 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 <laughs> I'm not sure China's ever had malicious intent against the U.S. or our trade secrets or like try to steal train designs or anything like that. But yeah. Hopefully Chinese like us. Yeah. <laughs> I doubt. Um, all right. In our next clip, uh, like we said, the West is being invaded. This next clip comes from Canada, but it's basically this similar sentiment that we have here in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, people getting let in with third world values that don't really align with the West. Let's see what this cab driver has to say to these young ladies. Well, if you was born in Pakistan, originally from Pakistan, you must have been kidnapped by me. You've been kidnapped by you? Of course. Of course, there is no option to get you, right? Okay. You have your, your women over there, though. Seriously. So you are in Canada, so I cannot say you anything. Okay. I yeah. cannot touch you anything. Because it is Canada. Yeah, well, yeah, definitely you couldn't touch me. There's you, laws to you, this shit here. You, you, you know what I mean? That's not that flattering. That's kind of scary. Trust me. Because, like, there, is, there was no option. Okay. Well, you have a good night. You too. Mm. Yeah. So he's speaking to you in broken English about how if this was Pakistan, he probably would have kidnapped you. Yeah. Or he, somebody else would have gotten you. And he is Pakistani himself. Yeah. Wow. So, so there, there, were, there were a couple of uh, tweets replying to this video that were like, oh, uh, he's just warning her, I think. This was a miscommunication on both sides. Thanks, Shazad Khan. <laughs> yeah. I think you're running near interference for your Pakistani boy. Yeah. Uh, and then he probably just meant to say that she would have been kidnapped if she was in Pakistan, bro. Does not look like he had malicious intent. It's like, oh, OK, thank you, uh, Arabic letters that I can't read. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> Uh, these aren't the people. And then if the Harvard girl was here, you know, she'd say, yeah, bring in 10 of your buddies. We'll see if the kidnapping laws still are on the books in 40 years in Sharia law, Canada. So, and then those people do what they do. And then it's like, no, no, I'm on your side. I'm the one who brought you here. And they yeah. like, don't even know what you're saying. And they and bludgeon they don't you care. And, and kidnap they you. you and kidnap you. And then worse, unfortunately. Yeah. All right. Last page of housekeeping. This one is, uh, it's not schizo, but it's, it's a lot to put together. Okay. So a lot of hard work went to this upcoming last page of housekeeping. Mm. Um, so obviously the protests have been continuing, the Palestine-Israel protests. And then uh, Richard Rapoy and I had a realization 
There's no new twinks. There's zero new twinks on the horizon. I haven't seen a free agent or even a, like, what do you call it? A recruit pop up. Yeah. Nobody with potential. Prospect. Prospect. Um, Because everything's focused on the Israel-Palestine conflict. Yeah. But back in the day, Dylan Mulvaney, luggage twink, hairy Indian guy, monkeypox guy, big titty woodshop teacher. And they, we took it all for granted. We were in like a bull run. I know. And then you think maybe they're hiding the twinks now going into the election. So mm. that they're going, oh, no, we don't even like twigs. Yeah. We're, we're the Biden administration. So I and, guess we're in the off season. And then also I've noticed that like the Palestinian thing is like taking up every woke uh, person's time and energy and everything. We're seeing a lot less gay TikToks talking about my pronouns are this or my uh, all the new twink stuff I'm up to, you know? Yeah. So it's kind of a power vacuum. Now, now they're just wasting their energy on this Palestinian thing. Yeah, it's so, very unfortunate. Yeah. But there was a clip from a protest from our friend Cannabis on Instagram. She covers events. She's, we've actually done a video with her in the past. She's great. Um, she covered a protest. And I want to kind of do a not a play-by-play, -play, but there's mm. going to be a couple moments I want to pause it and kind of pull the curtain back and show you who we're dealing with here. Hi, I'm Best Buyers here with Reason, and we are at the uh, Antifa, anti-Charlie Kirk protest. Yes! Pause it real quick. Yeah. All right, let's take a look around here. Okay. Fat non-binary girl. In the foreground, yeah. In the foreground. Mm -hmm. Garbage can shield LARPer. Yeah, in the middle. Um, then there's some, yeah, keep it going. Now here's the fight. Yep, there's a punch from Got, American The guy's guy. a pussy. The guy with the mask fighting is a pussy. Mask, fogged up glasses, all black outfit, black waiter sneakers, like yeah. black busboy sneakers. A little, little busboy. Yeah. So keep it going. He's a pussy. Mm -hmm. This guy actually de-escalates. There's a man right there in the middle. Yeah, there's one guy. <laughs> and he has no mask and on. He's not, he's not with the Antifa side. Then we got another guy with the mask and the scarf over here. Oh, he's yeah. a pussy. Mm -hmm. Then we got a guy behind him in the bike helmet. He's a pussy. Use this big guy in the foreground as a reference for this little pack of Antifa types. I think there. I, th I don't think there's anybody over five ten in that yeah. little group. Like this guy is probably six two. Yeah, six two two twenty. Uh huh. And then everyone else is a little boy. Yeah. A little boy trying to fight and LARP and, and pretend to be standing up for righteousness. I guess trying to get laid, maybe. Yeah. And a couple ladies in there who won't A couple suck ladies, a couple non-binaries, a skinny fat guy with skinny arms. Mm -hmm. And that's who we're dealing with. Like, that's who thinks that should be in control of the whole country. And that's mm -hmm. who thinks is going to overthrow with a revolution. Yeah. These pussies. The baseball team is just at baseball practice. They're not involved, you know, like they're not involved. Right. Yeah, so it's exactly. just the leftovers and the miscreants and the and the little uh, losers. Right. But then the news blows them up. Right. The news yeah. goes 40 protesters. And it's like, that's all the misfits. And then they show the close up shot of like just the chaos. And they go, yeah. oh, they're fighting. Something's going on. There's nothing going on. Yeah. There's, there's a bunch of kids LARPing. They can't move the needle, guys. If we one don't real them. man in the middle delegates yeah and breaks it up and it's over and like that's who doesn't get fought with yeah so it's so just kind of a friendly reminder keep that in mind especially if you're part of white boy summer mm. you're the that's what white that's what we should be doing if we can't focus on the protests because that's just like pussy college kids who are complaining and think they're standing up for the oppressed it's white boy summer well, unfortunately, this is all about to end, right? College campuses are going to be on break. They're going to yeah. be like, whoo we sweated that yeah. out, right? Like, everybody's graduating, so exactly. it's, it's kind of over. Um, so part of White Boy Summer, there was like a meme going around okay. uh, about White Boy Summer's here, and it was someone with Zins, protein shake, and coffee. Mm. And there was something that needs to be kind of talked about. Uh, the protein shake is actually filled with microplastics. Yeah. And we've spoken about this on the show before where like unless you're eating grass-fed steak, it's probably not healthy or secretly bad for you or not as good for you as you think. And those protein shakes, uh, Fair Life, those are actually ones I think we've promoted before saying yeah. it tastes like a milkshake. Yeah. Uh, it's actually full of microplastics. Yeah. Sucks. It's uh, one of the highest, higher than Slim Fast, 20,000 total phthalates per serving in nanograms. I don't know what that uh, some of those words mean, but uh, it's at the top of the list by a lot. A lot of microplastics. And even if you think you're eating like organic and good, like Annie's mac and cheese is yeah. organic. Like a lot of the crunchy moms get that for their kids. Mm -hmm. It's full of microplastics worse than Chef Boyardee. How much worse? Like three times worse than Chef Boyardee? Four times at least. Yeah. What's going on here? And so this was from a consumer report 
uh, big thing that printed, and I guess it surprised a lot of people. Yeah. That's kind of one of the things. Some of the packaged goods that are targeted and labeled as like healthy or whatever, it's just a marketing thing at the end of the day. Yeah. And the ingredients is. are shit and like a ton of protein powders and different uh, protein shakes and protein bars are really just like glorified candy and like fuck you up. I believe the term is like greenwashing where they put stuff on the label that makes it sound good. But then it's just like, oh, natural ingredients. And it's just like natural in that it exists. Yeah. we <laughs> <laughs> Natural ma- scientist made it in a natural lab. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, and then there is some upside sweet greens. Mm. Uh, they just came out and said, there's a headline that says, sweet green to cook exclusively using extra virgin olive oil. Yeah. And we've told you that before. If you're a restaurant, say no seed oils and your stock price will go up. Here's sweet green stock price. As soon as they announced that, it basically straight lined up. And that would make me bullish on sweet green for a long time because everyone who goes to work and goes to get lunch who wants to eat somewhat healthy will probably go eat that multiple times a week. And it's be one of those companies that has like a line out the door every lunch hour. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think that's what's going on. Uh, obviously, the bad guys are trying to toxify us and get us filled with uh, plastics and heavy metals. And then they zap us with EMFs and Wi-Fi. Okay. And then the Wi-Fi talks to the worms in our body, talks mm. to the parasites, gets okay. them really active and going. And it gets us all zapped, uh, as you know. Um, and then there was something that happened with electric cars. I think it was Tesla. Yeah. Or basically people are saying, yeah, you, you just kind of read it. It's summing up better than me. Some, this is a tweet from some woman who said, uh, wow, feeling depleted slash lost of vitality and you own an electric car? Might want to invest in an NM EMF detector and a mold detecting Petri dish like EC3. Mold apparently proliferated 200 times faster in the excitatory, excitatory presence of NM EMF. You let me read this? I don't know anything but, about this shit. But the this is point, your section. But the point is, the EMFs, the Wi-Fi, it all talks to the parasites, the toxins, the mold, all the things that we get toxified with, and it extrapolates. Gotcha. It makes it bigger. It makes it worse. It makes it happen constantly. And then what does that do? It puts your body into like a fight or flight mode, makes you stressed, and guess what? Stress is contagious. There was a study done with rats. Mm-hmm. You should know how to read this, Richard Rat Boy. <laughs> no, dude. Um, I told you this is your section, and now you're bringing the worms and the magnifying glass. All right, glass. now just read this. So this is uh, how stress is actually contagious. It says stress is contagious. Animals become stressed simply by being around other animals who are stressed, which triggers HPA axis, cortisol, increases activity in brain regions associated with emotion. Be careful who you surround yourself with. Uh, and then, yeah. Carnivore so- Aurelia said, we're all sharing a vibe with everyone around us. This is one of, if not the most important inputs to our health. Yeah. So if you're stressed, whether it's on purpose or by your environment or by what's in your body, you're going to spread that stress to others. And if everyone's stressed and kind of scared in fight or flight, the bad guys can control us easier. Yeah. So it's pretty easy. Let's go over some of the big lessons here without the worm stuff. Fair life. Out. Out. Microplastics in your shit. Out. Oh, grass-fed steak. In. In. Uh, sweet green. In. In. Uh, stress. Did we Out. already say that? Out. Sunlight. In. Electric vehicles. Out. Okay. There you go. Mineralized salt with no heavy metals. In. <laughs> okay. Raw milk. In. All right, all right. The guts of the cow. In. Okay. You don't need someone in between you and the cow. I'll just take the cow's pieces, however they come. It's his guts. It's his back. It's his butt. I'll slurp it up as yeah. long as you fed him grass. The more f- middlemen you have in between the food and you. No, no need to. It's greasy. No need to cut the cow open yourself. I'll handle it. Just order it online and we'll bring it to yeah, you. exactly. And it comes all full of seed oils to toxify you and make your face puffy and fat. That's yep. why you look the way you do. I know. <laughs> That's why you got this way. There really is a difference, guys. If you like, Seed oils stay in your system for like 600 and something days. If you don't eat them for a long time and eat steak, you'll look as good as you can look. There you go. All right, we're out of housekeeping and into Cringe of the Week. We only have one page of Cringe, but that's because we have two pages of Urban. Okay. First thing is the bad pronunciations at the graduation. Maybe Lee Zubeth Brataski. Sayer Uvun Jean Ju Brinan. Marcelin Brabazan Carr. Victoria Lee. Zubat Frost. What the heck? 
Victoria Elizabeth Bruce. <laughs> Carolina Urena. Tom Mugme. Then he goes, Thomas. that's good. He goes, Thomas. That was brutal. Yeah, did you think that not one student had a name you've heard before? Yeah, this was gibberish Spanish. She got zapped into the wrong language or something. Yeah, and then they mispronounced Thomas, and then the school's name has the word Thomas in it. It's Thomas Jefferson University. <laughs> Tom, Tom, <laughs> Have you never read a name before? Did you think the whole school is just like botched weird names and this whole class of like a thousand people is never, oh man, when were we in Timbuktu? Yeah, and you had a theory that it was all the phonetic spellings. Yeah. Uh, so maybe she got thrown off by that. I don't know what happened here. That but. must have been it. It must have been phonetic spellings, but you probably need that for like 20 people. I know. You know? You can go through the list. I mean, how many people graduate from Thomas Jefferson University? Probably like, what, class of 4,000 tops. You can kind of scan it and be like, okay, yeah. who's who's a weird name I've never seen before? <laughs> yeah, That's Tom, it. Tomas. Yeah. yeah, that was insane. Um, let's go to our next graduation clip. Uh, there was a graduation at Howard University, and then the parents were late and then broke a window. So I think all these parents were late for the graduation ceremony, and they stopped letting people in before 5 p.m. When the cer ceremony starts at 6, graduates started crying because their families can't see them walk, and it got a little out of hand. Someone broke the glass window. Mm. Well, maybe they race this over at Howard University. <laughs> I would think that Howard University is probably just white supremacist run. At yeah. the end of the day, right? Must be. Disappointed so, graduation attendees would be the euphemism. Break New, window. New York Post would uh, launder this through some adjectives and verbs. Um, yeah, so could you imagine being late for something as big as this that like people travel for, do everything for, and then you think you can kind of have a tantrum mm. and just kind of barge your way in? And they ended up canceling everything because they were, quote, rioting. Oh. So that's what it says. They canceled everything. They canceled the graduation walk. Well, that's kind of how they wanted to go down, too. Like If they can't have it late, mm -hmm. no one can have it. So uh, the kids, all they do. Actually, hey, shout out to historically black colleges and universities. You don't see much Palestinian protesting there. Mm. They don't fucking care. <laughs> <laughs> they got their own problems. Um, but so, you know, they, they their kids are protesting on campus. The pe person can't even pronounce the names. I think we're reaching an all-time low for university, like, uh, highness or whatever. Like, we're at prestige. Exa exactly. We're almost at a low point right and now. We have the Harvard girls saying, let everyone in. Yeah. Everyone's, and, like, uh, retarded. And we're going to show the one in Columbia. There's a uh, spoiler alert. There's a girl who, ha like, put handcuffs on herself and tore up her diploma immediately. From, we can do that now. Let's let that one rip. Van Hassel. Yep, and here she comes, and she has her hands zip-tied. Wow, really smart. Columbia, one of the best colleges in the whole world, probably older than America. They got the free Palestine, and she rips up her diploma. Wow. Yeah, that diploma cost you 250K, lady. Wow. So best and brightest. Yeah. Well, let's go to our next campus twink. This one actually just came across my timeline in the wild. And I just want to show the first guy. They're doing like man in the street on campus. And look at this, this situation here with this young man on, a, on an American campus. What's your favorite spot on campus and why? The Red Cedar, about a Subway sandwich, for, and then I'll skate down there, sit on my concrete block, so I'll throw shit into the water and see if I can get the smallmouth bass come up. I, we'll get there. You know, I'm get, one day I'll be the overlord and they'll respect me and my authority. Treat it with kindness and humanity, even though they're fish. Because I'm a fish too, just a very evolved one. You're a fucking idiot. Stupid woman's outfit. This would be like a woman you avoid, and then it's a man wearing it. It's a man wearing a woman's outfit. He's like a little bit of like a like a bitch boy. Yeah. But that doesn't disqualify him. He no. should be doing pull-ups like this. I know. He should be going, oh, 50 pull-ups straight in a row. Mm -hmm. He should be like an expert in a firearms training. I know. And take a bunch of firearms classes and be able to be an absolute killer that actually chooses peace. This is what they do, they're they doing to our white men on college campuses now. Yeah. Uh, and he's like a pussy, but instead of saying like, hey, I'm a pussy, how do I fix that and stop eating the poisons and getting microwaved by the EMFs, he decides to lean into it and wear a brassiere. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I'm good. A corset. I, I'm, I'm dressed well enough to do an on-camera 
street interview right now. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, no, I'm I'm good. This is I'm good to go. Oh, it'll go viral. Yeah, yeah let's do it. Yeah. So um, that's the status of what's going on in campus. Colleges all time low right now. Thank God summer break is coming. Colleges can kind of chill out and go. All right, reset 2025 school year. We're gonna reset. That was bad. Yeah. All right. Let's go to our last second to last clip. The trans punk band. This is a trans punk band singing about. I don't think I don't know if these guys are even trans. They, they might just be the same as this guy before, just wearing dresses. I thought they were all trans. I thought, he, all right, all right, <laughs> I thought right. the other guy was trans, too. Well, let's play it. And then listen closely to the message of this yeah. punk band. Only an ethically okay stew from Tesco's as the Morrison sings me some waitress. Not even just if you need to survive when you're starving. No one can expect you to die. I mean, you absolutely should steal as much as you can. Have food and blue race and clouds for your man. Because big companies are harmed by stealing. Because if you're very short, it raises their premiums, which is cool. Mm. It's catchy. No, it's not at all. He read a fucking paragraph to like some holding pattern beat that sounded yeah. like shit anyway. It's like they hijack a medium. They're like, okay, everyone's going to listen to us play music. Then I can say my my political spiel. <laughs> yeah. Like they hijack the, the medium. It's not good art. It's not a good message. It's just like a horrible leftist retard mm-hmm. who uh, probably ruined a couple people's nights. This is the punk band. Oh, very punk. Yeah, this is the punk band. Steal from Tesco and whine about it. Yeah. I spoke to the medic Sisyphus about this. And he pointed, he told me about this trend going on lately where progressives are mad that they look like Disney villains. Mm. And it's usually because, like, the evil villains in movies are often, like, asymmetrical. They have weird, stupid hair. Yeah. Maybe fat. Um, Bad noses. Unsightly in general. They don't look healthy. Mm-hmm. And then, like, progressives are like, hey, like, why do these villains look like me? And I think um, this guy, girl. Mm-hmm who's wearing women's clothes, looks like shit, has bad hair, and telling everyone to steal. Yeah, that weak man. That's why you're a villain. That's why you look like Cruella de Vil or whatever. Yeah, I agree. It's and like you are telling everyone to steal. You look like shit. Your hair's all stringy and green. You're wearing women's clothes. Are you the good guy? Are you, yeah. are you Bruce Wayne? Are you here to save the princess? Or are you some <laughs> fucked up prison keeper in the dungeon? Yeah, or do you have a reason why the princess needs to be kept in the dungeon upstairs? Yeah. It's like, you're not here to save anybody, buddy. You can't save yourself. Exactly. Visibly can't save yourself. Mm-hmm. So um, that's what happens. Yeah, and that's punk now, you know? Punk. And Rage Against the Machine, they want you to get the vaccine or something. So this is the new... Yeah. Uh, it's over, guys. Yeah. Uncle Gavin be very upset about that. I know. He... He, he loves that shit. I know. That's He likes that music. <laughs> <laughs> Gavin plays that song he goes, in the studio. He goes, it's punk. It's yeah. good, it's no matter punk. what. Yeah. All right, moving on. Speaking of... And to be fair, I think that's folk punk or something. Mm. Some stupid genre. They labeled it themselves as folk punk or something. I don't believe in that shit. I don't either. All right. Speaking of corporations, we do have some good news. For now, let's not count all of our unhatched chickens and assume they're going to hatch. Yep. Uh, Target has announced it will stop selling its pride collection in most stores after huge backlash over LGBTQ plus themed merchandise, including bathing suits designed for transgender people, armed sales. You read that. He read all the but you read that. I still got it. Um, yeah, so obviously the tuck-friendly swimsuit and all the in-store fighting that ensued from it, Target doesn't want none. That's a dub. That's a dub. That's a dub, Target, stepping off. Uh, I still don't shop there at all. I don't it's fucking all care. It's all plastic. Yeah, it's all. Ch- it's like Target is doing the same exact hustle that Walmart does. Cheap Chinese plastic shit, but then they mark it up more. Mm. Walmart's at least like, all right, we'll get you the fucking best price you can. Guys. Cheap Chinese plastic it's shit. Cheap Chinese plastic <laughs> shit. Target's like, oh, it's nice Chinese plastic yeah. shit. It's fun to go to Target. Yeah. Um, so, you know, fuck Target, but it's good to see a dub and uh, Pride Month is coming. So we're going to see which corporations step on the rake and actually go way too far. Mm. We're going to see which corporations have really fat women in HR or procurement who are buying the worst shit you've ever seen. So it's actually fun. You know how there's there's no new twinks and we're complaining about that? We're coming up on a season where a couple of uh, corporations are going to absolutely ruin their brand. So wow. that's a good point. Yeah. Um, and then there it, is... It's honestly, sorry to keep going on this, but it's honestly like a 
there might be some new corporate policies that become like, okay, everything that ne- is involved in this needs to come to the CEO. Like, you know what I mean? There's gonna, and then he's a white guy. More guardrails on this <laughs> shit, you know, more eyeballs on it because anybody can Dylan Mulvaney their company if, if somebody's asleep at the wheel. Well, also, I think like this coming out ahead of Pride Month mm-hmm. is an opportunity for people to get mad on Twitter, like all the LGBTs and the pans and the non-binaries. They get mad on Twitter and then maybe it gives um, Target some time to backtrack and say, yeah. actually, we're going to have our Pride section like usual. Sorry. I think that's what's going to happen. Okay. Okay. But I'm not trying to predict the future. It's not a... You do that all the time. It's not a fortune-telling show. It kind of is. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Well, we do get it right all the time. We have almost a perfect batting average. Yeah. I can't think of one thing we haven't gotten right. Michelle Obama is coming up. That's going to be wrong. Well... We'll see. You better hope. You better hope. And the so. main part of that bet is Michelle Obama is the president. I actually parlayed it with they're going to let Derek Chauvin off, and then things are going to get chaotic, and mm-hmm. then Michelle Obama's going to come. Yeah. It doesn't matter about the Derek Chauvin part. Michelle Obama coming and replacing Joe Biden is the is the actual. That's bet. the crux. Yeah. So there's like a two it's a two leg parlay, but the first leg is the Michelle Obama, and then the second leg, if I get lucky, will be Derek Chauvin gets out, Fair. and he should be out. He should. Um. All right. Let's get to urban decay. Okay. This first part is all crimes done in broad daylight. We're going to go through, there's like four or five clips. We're going to kind of go through somewhat fast, and then we're going to end it with a Steve Buscemi situation. Yeah. All right, so the first one is the trans murderer. Deeply disturbing and shocking video of a murder in broad daylight. On May 3rd, the victim, Stephen Anderson, is walking on Woodridge Square Drive to pick up his mail, sources tell us. He turns around at the sound of a screeching car speeding right into him. We're pausing the video right before he gets hit. The car reverses and hits him again, pushing him further into the street. Neighbors are on the phone, frantically calling 911. Another neighbor comes out with a pillow. That's great first aid. And that's when the suspect, Karen Fisher, identified in court records as a man, but also described as she by police, returns with a knife in hand. The suspect yanks and flips Anderson over, straddles him, and kisses him. We're not showing what happens next because it's too graphic, but that's when police say Fisher stabs him nine times. Jeez. Houston suburb, trans murder, run down with a car, then stabbed. Kisses him, too. Black on white. Yeah. But who knows what the, well, I'm, um, I, the, the kissing, it's just like, just kill me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say that, that might, well, it was a murder. He's dead. Well, oh, I know. So, but sorry for laughing. I know that was kind of bad, but the point is there might've been some sort of love beforehand. I don't know. We don't know yet. Conflict. But, but you don't just do that for no reason, but right. Broad daylight trans person walked away, tried to steal another car after it. We had to shorten that clip up. And you notice that at the end when the trans person finished the murder, yeah, it wasn't like frantic looking around or like, oh, I'm going to try, you know, it was just like slow as if nothing else in the world mattered. There was no worry about people stopping him or cops coming. There's no able-bodied man who's going to tackle me or just anything. whatever that trans person wanted to do and he wanted to murder and he took 10 minutes to do it and in 10 minutes he was unimpeded. Yep. Crazy. All right, let's go to the postal worker who got robbed in broad daylight as well. Yeah, this was a 63-year-old postal worker. He came behind me and boom, just hit me and put a gun to the back of my head. And he said, give me your keys. You don't want to die, do you? I go, no, no, no. So I reached in and got my keys, gave him my keys. He goes, where's your phone? You got two minutes. Oh, my God, I'm going to die. I thought he was going to shoot me when he was done, but I thought, well, I'm thinking in my mind, just stay calm, stay calm, stay calm. That's the best thing to do, stay calm. I feel anxious, and I can't sleep, and my heart is, like, pounding. I love my customers. I like Hmm. to So that was broad daylight in Dublin, California, and obviously looking like two black youths there. on You had to describe them. On a nice 63-year-old woman. Um, the post office, too. Yeah. Give us the keys to the post office truck. What does the post office have? Doesn't Random? the post office truck go 40 miles an hour? Yeah. And, and then it's like, what? You're going to get packages? It's like someone's loofah, a, a pack of vitamins that you don't need. They're for an elderly woman. And then, like, you know, it's children's kind of, book yeah, it's that you of, can't read. Yeah, you can't, you actually, it's above your grade level. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, broad daylight, mm. violent. Uh, the woman, you know, 
people die from stuff like this all the time, right? You have a heart attack. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. not stress. even that. Like, d- they just go bang. Yeah, they're, that's they're true, low too. impulse control. And then our third example is a Chicago broad daylight crime where the guy did go bang. This was in a nice-ish neighborhood of Chicago. Mm-hmm. It is going to be censored uh, a little bit so we don't show the shooting, but broad daylight shooting. So the shooting already happened. And now the thug, with the help of a car, a getaway car, is robbing him. And then this guy is just a 24-year-old man shot and killed because somebody wanted his, like, cell phone. Right in the middle of the day. In the middle of the day, he got shot and killed by some guy who got maybe $1,400 tops worth of value off of him. So that's the cost of a human life. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, these people, every single one of these people was willing to kill or almost came close to killing in the case of the mail carrier, all in broad daylight, which is kind of like an indicator that it's getting worse, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, midnight, you know, 2 a.m., nothing good ever happens after 2 a.m. Or, but to say, say south of the train tracks, you don't want to go into the bad part of town. Exactly. This is just the postal worker. It's kind of spilling over. Postal worker in the suburbs. This uh, area of Chicago is an area where a lot of, like, cops or blue-collar guys live. Um, it's not necessarily a bad area, and you just get executed and die on the front street or on your, on your porch, and it's, like, horrible. A 24-year-old guy who is a productive member of society, we shut everything down for George Floyd or something. We burned the cities down for George Floyd, and then this guy will be just, like, a peep in the wind, like mm-hmm. one news story, and uh, it kind of, like, blackpills you on uh, America's reaction to what actually matters, right? Yeah. You would think a law-abiding citizen getting murdered would matter way more than a drug addict counterfeit $20 bill, and you just kind of get like, oh, okay. I hate George Floyd. Yeah. Fleckus really hates George Floyd. And I, I've grown to resent him a lot more over the years when I see brutal, violent crimes like this get a GoFundMe that raises 10K or something. Yeah. And George Floyd's a bronze statue in, like, Baltimore or something. So, Do you want to use this opportunity to apologize to me for telling me not to wear my George Floyd hat to play golf? Uh, I didn't tell you not to wear your George Floyd hat to play golf. I said, don't wear that when we go to the pro shop and talk to the starter because I didn't want to get kicked out or something (laughs) for our nice 18 hole four hour round of golf because one liberal was there and took offense to it. So I told you, keep it in the keep it in the bag (laughs) until we're out until our drives on one. So, all right, let's finish this section up. Uh, There is was an illegal immigrant who raped an 11 year old girl. Yeah, and so this kind of goes call back to the Pakistani Uber driver section. It's like, oh, you know, in Pakistan, we would uh, we would kidnap you. And it's like, yeah, that happens here, too, from illegal immigrants randomly. So this 11-year-old Florida girl was grabbed off the street, thrown into a van, and raped by an illegal Guatemalan in the middle of the day. Again, broad daylight. The Guatemalan rapist had been previously previously released by DHS. Mm. Um, and so 20, 20-year-old undocumented immigrant... Um, it's like a h- horrible story where the child's mom let uh, the the girl out of her sight for like a little bit, and she starts frantically looking around for her, went looking for the girl, and she spotted the van not far from their apartment building where the victim and Lopez both lived. The mother spotted them inside and began banging on the door and shouting. So it's like caught. Nightmare. It's like a movie nightmare. Caught in the act nightmare. And then the guy, the Guatemalan was like, please don't report me. Please don't report me. Um, and obviously she did. And, you know, it's just the guy got caught. Wasn't even like smart or anything. And, you know, he's going to go to jail for a long time before he gets deported. So now the U.S. taxpayer can pay for this guy who should never have been here to like 30K a year so he gets meals in prison and can join a Guatemalan prison gang. Great. So uh, again, broad daylight. Um, It's just becoming one of those things. Are we going to show this NYC stabber too? This is daylight. Yeah, this is uh, is the last one before Steve Buscemi. This guy comes up, he cuts off this old woman, he almost knocks into her. Clearly he's got issues. He's sitting there, pulls out a huge knife. We have to censor it a little bit because it's a stabbing. And then he stabs that woman right in the stomach. Yep. Middle of the day in New York City. And he sits back down and goes, oh, yeah, you know, that's you were in my space, my public sidewalk space in New York. That's New York City. 
And then we could have had that Guatemalan out of here and then replace that jail spot with that guy. I know. One for one jail swap. And uh, instead, everyone's just doing crimes in the daytime. So, yeah. All right. Well, let's go to Steve Buscemi. Yeah, this is a quick one. Um, and we wanted to get a theory out there. Boardwalk Empire star Steve Buscemi punched by maniac in random NYC attack. So Steve Buscemi, famous New Yorker. Gets punched in a random attack by a maniac. That's mm-hmm. their euphemism. And then he, here's my thing. It's like if Steve Buscemi gets attacked and it's random, mm-hmm. that means like a hundred non-celebrities were attacked and then not reported or not publicized. Absolutely. Mike from the accounting firm. Yeah. He got hit and he goes, ah, it's just a lump on my head. Should I call the police? Nah, I got to get to work. Exactly. So they try to play it off like it's random. It's not a big deal. That's kind of what they did with the Maxine. Remember, mm. oh, the Maxine injuries. That's all random. It, it happens a little bit here and there. And then it's like Justin Bieber. <laughs> yeah, Justin Bieber's face is like this. Oh, yeah. Pray for me. Exactly. Chris Cuomo, Justin Bieber. And then it's like, well, how random is it if like out of the 500 celebrities, like a bunch of them got stuff? Yeah. And here's the other thing, too. Uh, on March 31st, actor Michael Stubarg who played uh, gangster Arnold Rothstein on the show, was out for a run on the Upper East Side when he was struck in the back of the neck with a rock. So that guy's an actor from Boardwalk Empire. That's two Boardwalk Empire actors who had been randomly attacked in New York City. Obviously, they make the news, like you said. Yeah. And then the other thing we were talking about before the show started is like all those young girls who got sucker punched and who posted TikToks, who have like a little bit of social media following enough to like get into the algorithm and go viral once their story is good enough. Imagine all the middle-aged people who don't have a Twitter or don't have TikTok or anything, and they're just like, they just eat their punches. They have a fat lip on the subway. Yeah, the board... (laughs) <laughs> the Boardwalk Empire actors and the girls with the big with 10K followers because they're hot or something. Yeah, they get the message out. Uh, the the random guy who works at the post office, he goes, uh, yeah, you know, I don't know if I should report this or not. And yeah. he carries on with his day. And so. these are just random incidents. But two people from the same show. Yeah, that sounds like a lot. And that's then, the iceberg thing where it's yeah. a, the Boardwalk Empire actors. Thousands of other people. Yeah, exactly. And if the or and here are the both the attackers. Uh, here's Steve Buscemi's attacker. Just some black guy. Mm. That's it. Man Mani- in blue shirt. Maniac in blue shirt. And then here's the Arnold Rothstein attacker. Mm. Just another random black guy. And, and they use multiple inf- euphemisms for all this. Yeah, they use maniac. Buscemi was strolling through Kips Bay last week when a brute mm. attacked. And then uh, brute let- sounds white. I know. Brute sounds like an Irish guy or something. Or Brutus. Yeah, Yeah. it sounds Roman almost. Uh, And then later in the article, it said, meanwhile, his deranged assailant took off and is still on the lam. So maniac, brute, deranged assailant. Just a black guy wearing a blue T-shirt. Yeah, exactly. Well, we are going to move on uh, to our next piece of urban decay. Uh, People are tired of the crime. This is going to be fast. Um, there was an 11 year old who was slashed and then the cops arrested the guy and then everyone was kind of swarming him trying to get some mob justice. This was in the Bronx, right? Yep. Hit him with the cane. That's good. We get it. But everyone was trying to get some, and the cops were defending the guy and saying, "Hey, let us take him to the station and let him go." Yeah, ourselves. let us let us fingerprint him real quick and put it back out on the streets, guys. So that's what's going to happen. It's like the police keep not in keeping people in jail. There's going to be a mob justice reaction to that uh, incident. It's going to look like that, but with no cops there, and the guy's just going to be dead. Yep. Let's go to the next one. There's a fight at In N Out, and then uh, there's one of the workers hit the guy. Yeah, I saw it. Oh, 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 shit. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Got 
got him at the end there. You and see that? clubbed him over the head with what, a fryer thing? I think so. Fryer yeah. basket? Hey, the cops better get there and arrest that in and out worker for getting in the criminal's way. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, and then our next one, um, there was, remember the restaurant uh, that we covered two episodes ago where the people did a dine and dash and jumped out the window? Maybe it was last episode. Yeah. yeah. So they did a dine and dash, jumped out the window. This is the same restaurant. Someone messaged me. No way. Um, who knows the owner. No. And said that this is the sign that's up at that restaurant now. Uh, welcome to our house in an effort to provide blah, 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 valuable service. No weapons, no exceptions. Dress code, no masks, no men's bags, no backpacks, no hoodies, no saggy pants, no men's sleeveless tank tops, no overly revealing outfits, uh, dinner, dining rules, just a bunch of dining rules, but you know, the no dress- saggy pants, no hoodies, no backpacks. Yeah, soon it's going to be no wife beaters, no face <laughs> tattoos, no anything, no do rags, no baby mamas, no pics, you know, yeah. what, what else? You're going to have to deposit for the surf and turf. Yeah. That's that, what's coming. That's our idea. So whoever knows that owner, deposit for the surf and turf. And then actually, they might not even have it. And then also, what I think could happen the way this plays out, it's almost like a reason to justify getting rid of workers and replacing it with AI. So it's a, and some restaurants have this. You get to your table and then you order at some little kiosk on your table. Mm-hmm. And I'll probably, I bet it'll get to the point where it's like you order on the kiosk, you pay for it, mm-hmm. and then it gets brought to you. Yeah. Like that's what's going to come. So it's like they're going to use the chaos that they've allowed to exist in order to usher in like the future they want us to have. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Alabama Teachers Bill of Rights. Another one of a gr- another group of people who aren't wanting to take it anymore. Yeah, how are we doing on time? We're good. Are we're we good? good? Okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. So Alabama Bill of- Teachers Bill of Rights basically is a new thing that just got passed in the Alabama State Senate, which I thought was interesting, right? Um, so I'm going to read a little bit from this article, but the gist of it is that teachers are fed up with misbehaving students and They need tools at their disposal to actually discipline these students because too many principals or school administrators are letting them off and just sending them back to the classroom to cover for the fact that they aren't really doing any disciplinary action, right? So Alabama teachers and lawmakers agree managing school discipline is tougher than ever. Alabama lawmakers gave final passage to SB 157 named the Teacher's Bill of Rights. The Teacher's Bill of Rights requires schools to take action against a student when the student disrupts the class to the point that the teacher sends the child out of the classroom. Before the student can return to the teacher's class, the principal must give written notification about what type of disciplinary action was taken. Uh, Right now, we have a situation where we know that disruptive students in our classrooms are inhibiting our ability to get teachers and keep teachers in the classroom. Uh, It's impacting learning and other students, and the teachers are at a breaking point, right? And so uh, basically what I said earlier, teachers like send a kid from class that, you know, you swore, fuck you, Mrs. Johnson. And then the principal goes, "Okay, you cooled off. Get back in there and do it again. Right. And then they don't they don't report the incident to the superintendent or anything because they don't want the school to have bad stats. And the school to prison pipeline, it's kind of like the same thing that's happening in New York or something where, all right, you're released. No bail Mm -hmm. is the same thing that's happening in the schools where, all right, you're released. No punishment. Get back to class. Right. And that's what they always tell us that there is the school to prison pipeline. And it's like, it's it's the opposite. It's no one's getting arrested for actual crimes. I know. And it's it's, like you get let out at school for doing misbehaving. You get let out in real life for breaking the law. And you're just called it's they're just called future prisoners who are like 16. It's like a piece of shit is a piece of shit no matter where he is. And like so it's not a movie where Sandra Bullock comes in and she's the teacher and like she shows him the power of math. It doesn't really work that way. Um, and so Alabama releases. So basically a lot of schools everywhere try to cook their books in little ways. It leads them to more funding. It leads for more opportunities. Um, and this, t- the teachers are so fed up with how the students are behaving and not being disciplined that they're making it mandatory that you report these incidents because the teachers don't care, you know, oh, how the school looks in the broad scheme. They care about, like, having control of their classroom and not having the most disruptive student ever, right? Yeah. And so um, Alabama releases yearly reports of student discipline called the Student Incident Report. And here's some numbers for you. The total number of all reported incidents statewide during 2022 to 2023 school year was 258,000, right, in Alabama. 
up from 81,000 during the 2017-18 school year. So it like 5X'd again or 4X'd. Um, 87 employees statewide were victims of an incident during that school year. And so basically it's gotten to the point where there's so few adults in the room when it comes to the Alabama public school system that now the state lawmakers have to come in and like make rules for things that already should have rules. Exactly. And then they have the teacher's bill of rights now that the teachers are trying to make a thing. And Uh now everyone's saying, or the progressives are saying, it's going to disproportionately affect black and LGBTQ students. Yeah, this was from a Reddit uh, post about the Alabama Teacher Bill of Rights. And then somebody goes, so what's stopping me from permanently kicking LGBTQ students out of all classrooms, knowing the administration can, you know, will be complicit in this? It's like their mind immediately goes to the worst, craziest. Like the teacher's a person who hates gay the, people. The teacher's a Nazi and he <laughs> wants to kick out all the black kids when it's like the teacher's fed up trying to teach like 16 year olds history and like one kid is shouting and fighting in the back and of the ruining class. Ruining it for everyone else. And so the progressive mind, like it automatically goes to the exception, the most theoretical exception to the rule ever, other th- uh, as opposed to like the day to day things that teachers are dealing with. And obviously, Alabama's a lot black, mm-hmm. and a lot of black students have behavioral problems. Very a true. Lot, a lot of black students come from single parent homes, and uh, they don't read at the grade level, and so they get frustrated when the teacher makes them read. Yeah, that's um, a good point. So, I mean, uh, the leftist mind can't comprehend like needing to correct for something. And the leftist mind is so quick to just like side. Like, this is what we see in every situation. They side with the criminal, or they side with the misbehaving student, or and they, they blame. Instead of blaming the misbehaving student, they blame the teacher. Oh, the teacher might be racist against black people when it's like it's the same with the police. The police are racist against black people. That's why all the black people are getting locked up. And it's like, no, there's a behavioral issue in the school. The teacher is the one who actually needs the the blind support. Yeah. Until you see evidence where, all right, this one teacher is a bad apple. Really abused it. It's like, yeah, you have to assume the teacher's got the best interest. That's the adult in the room. Take their word for it. Oh, this kid got in trouble. This kid got in trouble. It's not like assume the kid's a good kid and the teacher's bad, but we have it all backwards. You're absolutely right. They automatically side with a criminal or a brutally misbehaving kid, or they make up a theoretical situation where a gay kid gets bullied now. Which is justifying not making any changes that help everybody, 99% of the people. Yeah. So well, don't get too down or too depressed. I thought that was interesting. Hey, if you're not in Alabama and your kid's not in the Alabama school system, Uplifted Gold is here, baby. You're going to be all right. <laughs> yeah. Someone ate an edible. And you know what? If you're a teacher in Alabama, that section was Uplifting Gold for you. So That's a good point. It's If you're a criminal student, then it was bad. That's the only people it's bad for. So Exactly. Don't get too down or too depressed. Moving on to Uplifting Gold. First clip is a guy ate an edible. Yeah. And then he called the cops. Called the EMS. Yeah. Back inside. Sit down on the couch. Get, get yourself some cereal, some donuts, something. Relax. Have a lunch, And put on some cartoons or a movie and just lay there and relax. Because you don't want to spend your time in the hospital right now tonight. Be honest with you. Oh my darn! It's weed. You're not gonna die. It's not like they're giving him the they're giving him the the, the script. How to have that, a good yeah. time? That was like what his plan should have been the whole time. I know cartoons, punchies, <laughs> donuts, some food, eat some donuts, watch a movie, and then the whole thing here too. It's like it's almost a self fulfilling thing where if you like are on an edible and you're fucked up like this, mm-hmm. and you're like, I need to go to the hospital, and then you go to the hospital. It's like you're in a new environment. Everyone around you is kind of sick and weird and looking at you. And like it actually will spiral you worse. Absolutely. You just need to stay under the covers. Put the AC on. Hey, edible eaters out there. Remember, you can always eat more. You can never eat less. Same as a haircut. (laughs) (laughs) That's good advice. Happened to me yesterday with my haircut. Yeah, I think it looks good. Thank you. All right, let's go to the... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Let's go to the boat HOA story. This guy had a boat in his yard, and you can read it. Yeah, a man who kept his boat beside his house was ordered from the city to put up a fence to hide the boat from view. So he built a fence and hired someone to paint it, and he just made it one of those hybrid reality, mixed reality situations where it's painted like a boat anyway. Love to see it. Yeah. 
That's what you get. When people try to come down on you and make stupid rules, you want to make them pay a little bit, right? Especially when the rest of the town, I'm sure, is full of illegal immigrants and criminals being let out. And then, like, the HOA guy, you need to change something or we're going to fine you. You're the one guy who needs to uphold the social contract. None, yeah. none of us else are, but you yeah. have to. So, All right, let's go to the guy who Use does- your discretion. Don't always be an antagonistic asshole, but I'm sure this guy had a reason. Yeah, I, exactly. I trust. Um, this next clip, this person has a flower tree. It's a tree stump, and they attach roses to it. And then look at this. So they attach just little roses, which is just like pieces of stems mm -hmm. of roses. And then this thing gets cooking. He tapes it up, and now it's a full rose tree. Look at the size of this thing. Yeah, it's a rose bush, right? Rose bush, but you'll see. It's a rose tree. He grafted it onto him. Look at that. That's nice. And that's everything's just kind of meant to go. <laughs> that's right. You know what I mean? Life finds a way. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah. Um, okay, let's go to the poop up the butt. All right, this is actually my favorite clip of the show. I don't understand how he does this. So I guess they're putting it back in the cow because they didn't want it to go on the ground. Yeah, it's like the rose thing. They're growing something inside the cow. Wow. <laughs> All right. National Anthem at Stanford. Last clip of the whole episode. Isn't that nice? That's a darty. Frat boy summer, white boy summer. I saw, I saw some it. minorities in there. Yeah, that's what you have to say, frat boy summer for them. But also, white boy summer isn't just for white people. It's a mindset. Absolutely. So it's like it's a it's it's a if you're it's a white boy summer mindset. White boy activities, but anyone can do them. You wear boat shoes. You do zins. You go ride a jet ski. Yeah. Fishing. Water sports are a huge part of white boy summer, and yeah. white people activities is water sports. You funnel a beer. Yeah. You play golf. You're drunk on the golf course. Black people don't do water sports. That's true. All right. Well, that is the end of the episode. We do have shout outs today. Okay. Because we had so many birthday shout outs coming in, I had to split this week up into two. So our first shout out, happy birthday to Alan Hayes on May 10th. He lives in Bellevue, Washington. He's a huge show watcher. And um, he said that Bellevue is so liberal, it's horrible. Oh, tough break. So... Happy to happy birthday to you. Keep holding down strong. We'll keep holding it down here at the show. Happy birthday to Macy on May 10th. This is from your sister Marla. She had this set up. You're a huge show watcher. We appreciate it. You're great. Say something nice about Macy. Macy, you got a lovely sister there. Happy birthday. <laughs> you complimented right? Macy by complimenting her sister. This is always how it goes with the, the Macy and Marla. Happy birthday to Jennifer Glade. She turned 34 on May 14th. That's today. Wow. She's a based mom of four, homeschools the kids, and doesn't feed anyone seed oils. Completely, Very good. Completely based mom. She crushes it. Backbone of America. There you go. Happy birthday to Aaron, or maybe A.A. Ron. Okay. As that lady would have pronounced it, um, who turns 29 on May 14th today. A uh, longtime bonus lander and uh, the Amber Tracy, the Amber Tracy story. Oh. He showed his wife that, and then that got her kind of hooked on the show too. Very good, very supportive. You never know what someone might like. Yeah, you know? or what sticks with somebody. Exactly. Happy birthday to Tanner Norton on May 14th as well. He watches on separate devices with his wife, and they have been for a long time. Congrats, you two. Happy birthday. Thank you for watching. May 14th. May 14th. Crazy. May 14th. What's nine months ago? I don't know. July 4th or something? What were everyone's parents doing? Um, and then last one is for a young musician. Happy birthday to Dan from Patrick, your dad. Uh, Dan loves music, especially the guitar. Uh, keep going strong, buddy. Keep going strong. Keep focusing on music. Get really good. And one day you're going to sell out concerts across the world. You're going to go on world tour. There you go. That, um, that means, uh, yeah, his, his dad, uh, Patrick, got that set up for him. And he lets him watch the show? And Patrick lets Dan watch the show. He stays up late type shit? All right. That's, hey, we curse a little bit. It's a little rough. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Happy birthday, Danny. Happy birthday, Danny. We love you. All right. That's the end of the show. Thank you guys for watching. Another Fleckus Talks in the books. Please like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. FleckusMerch.com for the best merch in the game. FleckusTalks.com for a new bonus land dropping right now. 30-minute bonus land on FleckusTalks.com. Remember, if you're using the app, 
We're upgrading the app, so it's gonna be buggy for a little bit. The web browser is where everything's at. Everything works great on the web browser. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in bonus land, then we'll see you Friday. Tom, move me. Thomas. Thomas.